welcome the panelists uh, on stage, please. If you can grab the microphone. Uh, let's just start uh, with a short introduction, if you can introduce yourselves, starting with you, uh, Orit. Hi, my name is Orit Tatarski. I'm uh, with the INCD, the Israel National Cyber Directorate. Good morning. My name is Sagi Bar. I'm the CEO of uh, the Cyber Education Center, which is an NGO working for, uh, for Kids of Israel. Hello, my name is Noah, and I, I am a platoon commander in Sharim program. Hi, my name is Danielle Orr. I am an army soldier in the Sharim program in the city of Majar. Okay, so let's go one at a time. Uh, Rick, we'll start with you. Uh, let's talk about the role of diversity and inclusion in cyber education and how you concentrate on that. Well, David, we're currently um, putting on a strategic national plan uh, with the goal to, uh, capa to capacity building uh, alongside with equal opportunities, diversity and inclusion. And that plan has a uh, several uh, major principles. Uh, the first is that we're focusing on uh, underrepresented groups, um, periphery, ultra-orthodox, Arabs, women, just to name a few, and develop programs that overcome the barriers of those specific uh, uh, groups. Uh, some of those programs have de been developed over the years, as we saw in the video and here later on, and proven a major success, and we basically want to scale the success. And the second principle is that um, we believe that educational continuity is a key factor to succeed in getting uh, meaningful employment and uh, social mobility. So we need to start early in junior high and give the kids um, and experience and exposure uh, so they too can believe it's a possibility for them and motivate them to pursue it. Later on in high school give them specific expertise for example uh, deep cyber knowledge and uh, power skills and last uh, give them their first uh, p position uh, in a career placement uh, through military or national service and thus giving them some uh, major hands-on uh, experience and from there the way to the uh, startup nation is uh, paved and that principle I want to mention is that we're putting um, together a um, scalable cross-sector coalition uh, system uh, based on coalition between government, military, um, industry, philanthropy, uh, uh, academia, because we believe that like in cyber, it's a team effort uh, and you need everyone on board to win it. Thank you. Saki, uh, the Cyber Education Center started the national plan 13 years ago. Tell us about a little bit about the history. 13 years ago, only 3% of Israel IDF uh, cyber and tech uh, soldier came from the periphery of Israel. Uh, we thought that is not the right thing to do, so we tried to break, to break the connection between the zip code of the kids and the, the, their future. Um, for that reason, the machine program was established uh, that, and gives uh, kids the, the opportunities to be part of the high-tech industry in Israel. Um, 13 years later, there are more than 3,000 graduates of uh, today, 65% of which are accepted each year to IDF, tech, and cyber units. And those 3% I mentioned at 2010 are, uh, have become 35% uh, of the cyber units coming from the periphery today. Machine have proven that offering the opportunity changed the reality dramatically. Now, we want to do uh, the same for all the kids of Israel, all the kids in the periphery. Thank you. Uh, Daniela, you are uh, a soldier, a teacher in uh, the uh, uh, Shavim program. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your experience. Of course. So I'll say my name again, Daniela. 
I work in Madar, as I said before, it's a city up north which has a mixed Arab population which means there's Druze, Muslims and Christian Arabs. Um, and so we talk about the big picture of inclusion and tolerance um, and I'd like to share my personal story of how I see it in my day-to-day -day life and in my army service. Um, so when I first came into school, I was overwhelmed with a lot of students um, and a lot to teach them. I had a lot of material to go through. Um, and so I first came into class and my first class that I had, I noticed that one troublemaker kid. We all know those students in the classroom. Um, and as a teacher, I was now in that uh, position of a teacher and I noticed that troublemaker kid. And as a student, as the students started to learn and the year went on, I saw that the teachers kind of avoided him, tried to put him off to the side, interact with him as little as possible because as little as trouble as possible. Um, and I decided, you know what, no, I'm going to take his hand and I'm going to walk with him and I'm going to try to go on this process with him. And so I came into class one day and we sat down and we started with building an email. That's something that he didn't have, that was something really important that was needed for our class, so we made him an email. And then we opened up the website that we used to build websites, which was Coding Grooms. And we started our code with a title called Raid is the Best. My student's name was Raid, he was a Jewsy Arab. And so, of course, Raid is the Best, because our students are always the best. And we went from building a title to adding a picture to adding fonts and colors and different pages and buttons and so many different features and he left the class so proud of him he came back the next week with the biggest smile on his face and said Daniela I have something to show you and so he came to me and he sat me down in class and he showed me this awesome website that my mouth dropped I thought he pulled it off of Google I didn't really believe him at first and I saw that he went through all the code, he understood what he was doing, and he managed to build a full website. And in that moment, I realized, this is it. This is what we're doing. We can teach a student to open up a computer and learn how to code, but what we're doing is teaching our students to believe in themselves, teaching our students to have this feeling of, I got this and I can do it, very similar to what we saw in the video. And so we talk about this whole big project of making this big change and we start with each student we change one student's world at a time um, and together we try and change the world we we do it one step at a time and this student right is now coming out of class with a huge smile on his face and the hope is that he can future his education in high tech and hopefully make israel a better place thank you we'll, we'll be watching your progress then um, Noah, you're a squad commander in the Kshorim program, and tell us a little bit about how uh, you see it from your perspective, uh, how you cope with this ambitious project. Uh, so, first of all, I want to say that I'm excited to be here representing the IDF and the Kshorim. It's very exciting for me. And in my point of view, um, in my point of view, we are part of a much bigger picture. Uh, all forces of the IDF is with us and uh, the education uh, branch, the intelligence branch, the unit uh, 8 uh, 200. And Sharim is telling a story of inclusion, inclusion between the army and the, the Israeli society and partnership. Uh, partnership between all those people who work together uh, to succeed, uh, like the members here in the panel. Uh, in the end of the day, our goal is to create a system uh, for making this program scalable and sustainable to reach every student in Israel who needs us. Because uh, we believe that every student, no matter how, where he grow up, uh, has the, should, be, should be able to open his own computer and, uh, and has the sense of capability. Uh, so this is what we do, this is what Daniela and her, his, her friends do, and uh, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Well, um, we're proud of all of you. Uh, unfortunately, our time is running up. So thank you so much for joining us, and good luck in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.